cells spend an enormous amount of energy pumping sodium outside cells. This creates a sodium gradient where the sodium which is outside the cells uh, would like to diffuse into the cells. Cells take advantage of this sodium gradient to move other substances as well other than sodium. There are a variety of pumps which allow sodium to enter the cell down its diffusion gradient, but only on the condition that it transport another substance as well. So for example, if a cell would like to transport glucose, there are co-transport pumps which allow glucose to enter the cell, the direction that the cell wants to transport the glucose, on the condition that sodium allow, uh, is allowed to come with it. Since there is a sodium gradient, the cell takes advantage of this gradient to transport a second substance, glucose. There are many other substances which can also be transported in this way. Amino acids can also be transported using these co-transport pumps where the amino acid is allowed to enter the cell uh, if it passes along with sodium. There is a sodium gradient and so therefore pumps take advantage of this and allow sodium to enter the cell on the condition that a second substance is transported along with it. There are different types of amino acids and there can be different types of co-transporters which transport amino acids. These co-transport pumps are not only utilized as individual cells transport what they need, but also they can be functional along the digestive tract or along the urinary tract as glucose and amino acids are absorbed from our diet or as glucose and amino acids are absorbed from the filtrate which is becoming urine and uh, reabsorbed into the bloodstream. So a number of substances are transported along with sodium. This type of transport is referred to as symport since the two substances are moving in the same direction. The glucose or amino acids, for example, are entering the cell along with sodium, which is entering the cell. This is considered as a type of active transport. It's considered active transport because while energy is not used to drive this co-transporter, Nevertheless, it only functions because there was a sodium gradient set up that could be used to power this movement. And this sodium gradient was created through the action of the sodium-potassium exchange pump, which did require a great deal of ATP energy. And so therefore, this is considered as a type of secondary active transport. Secondary active transport because energy is used to set up a sodium gradient, which then directly powers the transport of the second substance, such as glucose or amino acids.